What's up, YouTube? I'm Valentin de Mer, and this is a good review of Warhammer The End Times Vermintide. Vermintide is an action, slasher, partially shooter game by Thatcher. You will be slaying oversized rats called Skaven as you are moving forward with the mission and completing objectives on the way. Sounds a bit familiar to Left 4 Dead, doesn't it? The base concept is indeed very similar, but it works well and the game feels different enough. For the most part. Also, like Left 4 Dead, Vermintide has some attention put into its core system. The question is though, how much attention? Let's find out. I'll be reviewing every aspect of the game's gore effects, and the score will be set based on four categories. Body damage, environment, animations and sounds, the feel. Each limb has one point of amputation, the head can be dismembered or destroyed, the torso can be sliced in half, and the tail can be cut off. The looks of that aren't great. While I can get why it's a clean cut, taking the weapons you use into account, I still think there should be at least some blood splatter around the amputation and generally on the body. While you can overlook that when it comes to the limbs and the tail, it looks really bad when a character is cut in half. Should also be noted that dismembered heads and limbs disappear quickly and don't stay for as long as the body stays, which is a pretty short period as it is. Another minor issue is that when the head is destroyed, it just vanishes in a blood spray with very few bits flying out. As for non-dismemberment body damage, you have blood decals for the sword attacks. They look pretty good, work just fine for the most part, and provide a good response when you don't dismember enemies. Should be noted though, that you can't cause them on dead bodies. The gunfire is a different case. You have several 3D wound variations as a response for that. To be honest, I did not like those. The looks are very bad. There's a very limited amount of variations and you can clearly see that it's just plastered on the character. The only way I can see 3D wounds working is if you have a multi-layer damage system or a crazy amount of variations that cut into the body. In my opinion, if you can't get 3D wounds right, it's best to just stick to decals, especially when they look really nice in this game. As for the arrow attacks, you will see arrows sticking out of the body without any wounds, which is pretty odd when the game has a wound decal mechanic. Also, enemies get impaled by them. I'm all for impalement when it makes sense, but it just doesn't look right in this case. I think that long death animations would have been a much better response. As for the fire, there is no related body damage whatsoever. I actually noticed threads losing glimpses when you are shooting fireballs at them. Yeah. Also, there are no death animations for that, they just go ragdoll. But this may be fixed. When I posted about it on the forums during the beta, one of the developers said he is working on actual responses for burning, so hopefully this will change sometime soon. As for the heroes, the player characters, there is no body damage of any kind whatsoever. Obviously in this type of a game, I'm not expecting detailed response for every hit, but I do think that there is room to make it more interesting. The first idea would be gory body damage variations on death. If the character is close to bleeding out, you could have several executions for whatever type of threat is killing them. A good example of a similar mechanic can be seen in State of Decay. The second idea is some progression during the level itself. There are several possible approaches for this one. The first approach would be to have characters get progressively covered in blood as they kill Skaven in close range. The second approach would be variations where the armor and the clothes the characters are wearing get progressively damaged. Right now, at the end of the round, you will see perfectly clean characters. They slaughtered hundreds of rats and they should look accordingly. 
I want to mention Spatial Rats too. For the most part, they have the core system of the average Skaven, with tickles and amputations. I think that in order to make those fights more exciting, the armor and the accessories they are wearing should be able to take damage and get broken off. And of course, there's always that character. Meet the Red Ogre, a large rat with an extremely inflated health bar. The only body damage you will see on him is blood decals and arrows sticking out. Unfortunately, I see such characters quite frequently and I still don't get the appeal of repeatedly attacking a character while seeing little to no response on their side until their large health bar drains and they die. Of course it's challenging, but challenging does not necessarily equals fun. In order to actually make it fun, you need to see proper response on the character to justify that huge health bar, which would eventually mean that the body damage for the Red Ogre would have to be significantly more detailed than what you have for your average rat. I have a video with further discussion of the issue and you can find the link to it in the description below. As for the blood spinning effects, the initial splatter when you hit a character is actually very good. The splatter usually is proportional to the spinning effects and the blood stains themselves look very nice and gory too. The issue is that this is literally it. All the splatter that you have in the game is just the initial reaction. There is no further bleeding and there are no blood pools under dead characters. What makes matters even worse is this. Really nice looking spinning effects that go into nowhere and don't stain anything. I'm not sure what's the point of having such effects if they don't do their job. If you see something spinning, it should leave a stain. That's just how it works. If you can't make it stain for technical reasons, then just avoid this effect altogether. How is the mess in the long term? You can set a blood decal amount with a maximum value of 100. The threshold for bodies is very low and there is no similar setting to modify it. Despite the very low max value, a setting for blood decals is a step in the right direction. All that's needed here is to up the limit, preferably give an option to the player to set their own value and add a similar setting for bodies as well. But either way, until this is implemented, if it will even be implemented, the aftermath experience is not good. 100 is clearly a very low value and you'll be seeing stuff disappear in front of you constantly. The response animations when attacking the rats are pretty cool. They look good, feel heavy and deliver a decent response during combat. However, there is no change of behavior after the rats take damage. While it's not that important for this specific game, I still think that a wounded state of behavior would be worth the effort. There are several animations for death, but for the most part, the characters just go ragdoll. This is where I think the game needs a lot more focus. My suggestion would be to have animations before the character falls and lengthy wiggling animations on the ground after that. During that wiggling, a blood pool could form below the character. The sounds are very good in this game. The response sounds on impact are nice and brutal and they sound right for every weapon. The character sounds, both the Skaven and the heroes are done very well. The Reds will respond when hit, make sounds when fighting and the heroes will command too. The voice acting is great and you won't have quiet moments during combat and that's all that matters. The gore system of Vermintide doesn't feel bad. You get a decent response for the most part and there aren't that many major issues. However, you do have a lot of smaller problems in the game and eventually when those pile up, you will very much feel it. So the score for body damage is 12 out of 30. The score for environment is 11 out of 30. The score for animations and sounds is 18 out of 30. I give the feel a score of 5 out of 10. 
So this gives the gore system of Warhammer the end times Vermintide a total score of 46 out of 100. The gore mechanics in Vermintide have a pretty good base to them, but there is still a lot of work to be done to make them functional. The issues with the body damage need to be ironed out, the blood splatter mechanics need improvements, and the animations need a lot of attention too. But at this point, we aren't far from the game's initial release, so I wouldn't be surprised if things will be fixed along the way. Should there be significant improvements, I will let you know about it in an update video. Hope you enjoyed watching the review, let me know how you feel in the comment section, and if you liked the video, subscribe and share it with your friends. You can find the link to all of my Go reviews in the video description. Until next time!